Hi, this is Joe Boland, and today we're going to look at arrays in VisualBasic.net. In the last lesson, we looked at list boxes, and we're going to use the list box in our program example today to demonstrate how an array is declared and how we can reference it and see its output. We're going to take a look at the definition of arrays and understand it first, because the important thing about arrays are that we can use the understanding of an array to learn about other kinds of collections. Um, we have many different kinds of collections we use in uh, programming, and an array is one of the first things to learn about that type of collection. We'll learn then later on about generic collections and how to use them. But right now we're going to turn our focus to Visual Basics arrays and let's take a look at the definition related to that. According to uh, Microsoft, an array is a set of values that are logically related. In other words, they're the same kind of thing on it. And in the example here, they talk about number of students in each grade in a grammar school. And the important thing I want to emphasize here, it's the same data type. Either we're looking at grades, in this case it might be an integer type value or a double type value, or we might be looking at their names. In that case it would be a string type value. But it's the same kind of logically related uh, values together. And we can refer to the array as one name, so we can give it a name uh, unique to our project. But we can reference it by its index or subscript to tell which element we're looking at in the array. And the difference that we'll see, especially in Visual Basic and other programming languages, is the index starts with zero to the highest index value, not from one. And that's often a, a spot where students first learning about arrays have difficulty. Uh, because in school, a lot of times we think of from 1 to some value. Here we're looking at 0 as the base value for the first element in an array, and then we're going through it by referencing the index or subscript to reference that element as we go through each different element of the array. Now, the important thing to remember, too, is an array versus a variable that we might declare. A variable has a single value where an array is a collection of values on that. Now, at this point, if you'd like to, stop the video and take a look at Microsoft's site to read more about the definition uh, of arrays and then come back to the video and we'll continue on. Okay. As we're looking at arrays, one of the things to me that makes it easy to understand is looking at Excel spreadsheet. Many people are already familiar with Excel spreadsheet or some other spreadsheet. And here we have uh, Excel on the left side where we have the home cell A1 uh, with a value 3 in it. And we see as we come down the column that we have seven different rows with seven different values in that column. That is basically what a one-dimensional array is in Visual Basic. Here we have one name called my array. Now it could be any name we want to give it to it, but each value has the same value as in Excel here. But the difference is we start with the base zero for the subscript, not one as we have with Excel. And you'll see I have seven elements and my upper bounds of the array is 6, not 7 as it would be in Excel. So the important thing to remember is we start with our lower bounds index at 0 and our upper bounds index at the highest element that we have stored in our array. And we declare that array by declaring it with the uh, dim or dimensional uh, keyword, give it a name, and then we put into it the upper bound uh, that we're going to be using for that particular array. In this case, this is going to be holding seven elements, not six. And so we got to remember that anytime we're dealing with seven elements or any number of elements, it's one less than the number of elements we have. And then we declare it with a data type. Just like we would declare a variable with a data type, the difference is this is a series of values 
of the same data type. Taking a look at the same type of thing in Excel, we have here a series of names. In this case, I used again seven names. And here we see, and, and I've declared it just generically my array, again, with a value of six, because there are seven elements to my array. And then I've assigned it a data type of string. And here I'm initializing each element of the array with its string value that I have in quotation marks. So this is how we declare an array. And in this case, for a string value, we're assigning each element one at a time, changing the index or subscript of the array to reference what element we're working with. Now, as we declare array, there are many ways to do that. Uh, and we'll take a look at those. The first one, as you've seen, is the simple one where I declare an array name and I give it the upper bounds uh, or one less than the number of elements that I have and then I give it a data type. In this case, it's a double data type for a numeric value. Another way to do it, although not seen very often because as you get more comfortable as a programmer, you'll realize that you're always dealing with a base zero value. But you can use the exact same uh, way of declaring it by calling it from zero to six. These two are identical in terms of what they're declaring. This is a little bit more reader friendly. But as you get more comfortable being a programmer, this is a more acceptable way of seeing the values as you declare an array. Here is a situation where we declare the array, same name, and we set it's a double. And here I call it uh, the, the double parentheses here, basically saying this is going to be an array. And we're initializing it with values. And the commas separate the values of this one-dimensional array. In this case, we have some elements going in. And as we in initialize it with the, the uh, values inside the little brackets, we'll end up with the same number of elements as if we had declared my array with a uh, upper bounds of six. So this initializes it automatically with values and declares uh, what size it is by based off the number of elements we have in the initialization string. Now here we see a, a string uh, being declared. And it has an upper bounds of 6, which there means there's seven elements. Here's another way of writing it. But this time, the data type is a string value, not a double value. And here we see it being uh, initialized just the same way as we did it up here with the my array is double initializing it. In this case, we're using the string. And we're initializing with the different names. And we'll end up with having seven elements. There's seven names. And we'll end up with a uh, basic decoration equal to my array with a six for the size of the array. So that gives us an idea of the array. Let's now take a look at our program that we're going to be working with. This is my simple one-dimensional array uh, list box. And uh, basically, I have a list box. It's going to be only for output only. So I've changed its properties uh, on that. So it has uh, a selection on that of none. And we'll see that as I scroll through on that. Um, and uh, there it is, selection mode none. So I won't have anything in here to select like I did in the last video where we did have selection. We'll use it strictly as output. And then when I display it, we'll see the values coming out to the list box. Let's take a look at the code now behind our program. Here we have the program being declared. And before I get into everything, we, I want you to know about the documentation that's available for this particular video and this program. The actual capture of the program is out there at Imager. And uh, Visual Basic Code is at Pastebin, the code I'll be using. 
uh, in this uh, video. And you'll, of course, know that the video itself is at uh, Bolin Presents at YouTube. Articles to take a look at, though, uh, are helpful, are the Microsoft articles that are available um, out there. So if you want, stop the video, take a look at this. Definitely go out to Pastebin and, and take a look at that. You'll see the link to Pastebin off of my main page on YouTube. Now let's take a look at what we're doing. We have Option Strict on, and we can't set this uh, for a new program in the uh, Tools Settings area, uh, setting the options uh, to have that for a new program. But I want to explicitly say Option Strict on here so we can see this. Now, as we come in, I have hidden right now some class level variables that we'll be using in this program. Uh, they are not important at this point to understand what we're going to be doing. But the first thing we do is we do clear the uh, items uh, collection uh, in the list box so it's cleared out. Then in here we see the declaration uh, uh, using my array, five elements, or I should say we're declaring it as five, but there are actually six elements in here of a double data type. Here, like in the slide, we're putting in the values to the six elements, starting with the base zero, signing these values into it. So let's run this at this point. We'll see it uh, be declared and loaded up. And then what I'm going to be doing uh, after it's uh, loaded up is we're going to be adding uh, the information to the list box. And here we're just basically sending out the information to the list box and I'm putting out the length of the array and length is a very important uh, property but it can become confusing the length of the array equals the number of elements in the array but it also means that if I have a two-dimensional or multi-dimensional array it represents the number of elements in the total array not just the first dimension of that array. We're looking at one dimensional arrays, so for us, this represents basically the count of the array. Also, we have in uh, Visual Basic the get upper bound, and here, since it's a one dimensional array, we're starting with zero. If we had a two dimensional array, we would use the get upper bounds zero and also one. Uh, so basically, we're subscripting the first dimension of that array or rank of the array um, and we're looking at how many uh, what is the upper bound so we'll see that this value represents the highest value we have here five on that or I should say it will come out to be what we've declared uh, in our array then I'm going to take the values that we've initialized up above and I'm basically going to be outputting those values, letting you see those values. And right now I have the, uh, the uh, seventh element or the uh, sixth um, uh, subscript reference uh, of the array uh, commented out because we only have our array declared for five. And I'd get an error message if I went further than that. So let's see this part of this program run. So let me hit the start button. And we'll see our program running. And we hit the display. And you'll see that where I declared the array as five in the declaration, we'll see that it has six elements. That's the length of all the elements in my array. And then the upper bounds, in this case, is five. And here we see the actual elements coming through. And we see the values that we've processed. Okay, let's take a look now at changing that array and I want to show you that we can dynamically change that array in our program. So let's take a look at our code again and in my code I have uh, commented out uh, this redimension. What I'm going to do is uncomment uh, the redimension uh, keyword and what I'm basically starting out is I've declared my array as five but for some reason, I've discovered I need to have another one in my program. And so I can redimension it dynamically in my code. Here I've 
added one more element by making a three dimension of six. And now I'm going to put a value into that uh, seventh element uh, of my array so that it has a value. And I'm going to uncomment my list box information down below so we can see that last element, which will be minus 9.3. Let's run this one. Okay. We have our program ready to go, and I'm going to hit the display. And we should see the, the 5 here plus the next one, which we dimensioned. Except for, we're going to see a little surprise. All those elements, 0 through 5, became uh, a value of 0. They reinitialized themselves down to 0. And only the element we referenced after the redimension statement had a value in it. So it's a little bit of a warning. If we want to quickly resize our array, we can do the redimension uh, and give it its value for the size we want. But in the process of doing that, uh, we'll lose the values of our uh, array that we previously had in there. But there is a way around this, and I want to show you that. Let's go back to our code. And one of the things we can do, instead of just redimensioning it to a new size, we can use the uh, redimension with the preserve keyword in it. And by using the preserve keyword, we maintain the values that we had in our array. And we've declared a new size, and then we've uh, uh, put a value in the new empty spot we have in our array on that. So let's see this one run. Okay, let's hit the display, and here we have the values still intact, and then we have our sixth element in there coming in. So we started out declaring our array with a uh, for six elements uh, by using a dimension of my array with a five in the um, area when we declared it. And then we did a redimension, adding one more element by redimensioning at six. But we used the preserve keyword to keep the values in place. So that's an important thing. So a lot of times you might have a situation where we want to dynamically change the size. We can do that by using the redimension with the keyword preserve added on to our program. Okay, so we have this working for us. And we see very quickly how we can do that. Now let's take a look at working with something other than a double. Let's work with um, a uh, value, in this case, of um, working with string. So I'm going to comment out this information right here on that and comment it out real quickly. Now I'm going to go over to where I have a little bit for cut and paste in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, try it a little bit differently. This time I'm going to declare the array and initialize it. So I'm going to copy this over and paste it into our form. And this time we're going to basically do a very quick uh, declare and, and uh, initialization of our array. So now we're doing the same thing. Uh, I have no value put in here for the size. But it'll get the size based off the number of elements that I'm putting in to my uh, expression list inside the brackets. So let's watch this work. Okay, hit display. Whoops, because I forgot that I'm not declaring the full size. Let's go back real quickly and make a quick adjustment. Let me come back on that. And comment this particular one out and then let me rerun it okay and there are values in there uh, already filled in by a quick initialization so you also saw a little bit of a danger if I happen to reference an element outside my range I will get an error on that let's add another element to our program and let's bring back the one I just commented out. And let's add uh, our negative 9.3. So I'm just going to add this in with a comment. 
uh, minus 9.3. And now we'll run it and we'll see the difference. And there they came in, being all initialized in one statement and declared. And then we process the uh, elements. So that was done using a quick uh, initialization of the array versus declaring it and then putting in the values individually into the array. This is a much more efficient way of doing it. And you'll find that you'll uh, like doing it this way um, as you program more. Initially, you might want to do it this way to get familiar with the idea that you're putting a value in each element of the array by referencing its index or subscript. But later on, this is a quicker way to deal with it. Now, let's take a look at this with uh, working with a string value. So I'm going to comment out the one I just put in. And let's bring over a string value. In this case, I'm going to do a quick initialization of a string. I'm going to copy this one over paste it into our program. This time it's a string value on that and I will be loading this up with the names and we should see those come out. Now I don't necessarily need the two string uh, method here because they are already are strings uh, as I declared it here but we'll see this being uh, initialized and filled and then we'll be processing it down below. So let's see this one run. Okay, hit display, and there they came in. So here we see the names coming in. So we can put things like uh, baseball scores, uh, different kinds of things, maybe grades, uh, names, all kinds of things, but they have to be the same data type on that that we're working with. So the important thing to remember is that we can declare an array and the important thing is if we declare it and put a value in here this is one less than the number of elements because we start with base zero and as we process it we can uh, uh, initialize or reference each array element by its index and put assign a value to them uh, but we have to put in a value that represents the data type that we declared our array. Here we declare this one as a double data type and we put in uh, fraction numbers or decimal numbers here into our array. Down below we declared it as a string. We put in string values in this case of names. We can also declare the, the array and initialize it in one statement and process it that way. So this is a nice way to remember how to process an array and we can reference each element. Now, just to give you a hint of the next video, instead of hard coding in the values for the index, we'll loop through this using one statement and we'll use a variable for our index to change it for our output. So stay tuned, come back and uh, take a look at our uh, next video as well. Rerun the video, take a pause, Take a look at the links that I have to the Microsoft Network uh, where you'll see some different articles about arrays. It's key to understanding arrays because, as I said, they're the first step in our learning about dealing with collections. And a computer deals with a lot of collections, be it records from a database, be it uh, a collection of different types that we uh, make up later on using generic collections. This one is the first stage to learning about arrays, and you'll discover there are a lot of different things uh, that you'll use that are very similar to arrays. And we'll learn later on in the next video about how to loop through or iterate through our uh, values or elements in our array to either process them for some kind of processing or to output the information to a screen. So get your hands dirty in the code. Look at the example at Pastebin and try a little bit out. And until next time, take care.